I'm not really going to focus to, today on new Butte new cultivars. There's a fair bit of information already available. If you go on to the, uh, well, first of all, um, the, the GRDC Ute Guide, the Pasture Legume Ute Guide, is still pretty up to date. And uh, if you haven't got a copy of that, it's certainly I'd recommend you get one. Um, it's a it's a really good a really good resource book. And also there's the Australian Seed in Industry Association, uh, and I've put the website details in my paper in the uh, uh, in the booklet there. And they've got a seed database that's also is kept up to date. So what I really want to focus on today is more the management of what we've already got, and really. The, the key, and we're talking mostly annual pastures, I will mention a little bit about Solar and Lucent at some stage, and this can be pretty interactive, so if you've got any questions, uh, fire, them, fire, you know, fire them out as we go, as we go through. Um, so, uh, but really when you're talking annual pastures, we're really talking about seed production. So the key to a, to the pro a productive annual pasture, whether it's medics or clovers or balance or whatever, is to, is to produce heaps of seed in the first year. So really you're going to turn 10 kilos of seed that you sow um, into 500 kilos. That's what you've got to do. That's your aim in the first year. After your pasture germinates, you know, and that's, a, that's point 0.1 of a square metre, so after it germinates, you've got to have 100 plants in there. So if you drop that down anywhere in the paddock, there should be 100 plants. If you've got 100 plants, then you've got a dense pasture. If you've got less than 100 plants, then you need to do something about getting more seed in the ground. So we can make the plants grow, we've got fertiliser and inoculants, so we can make the plants grow, but, but really to get the plants there, and the, the key thing is having the plants there in the first place. If you're walking this time of the year before it germinates, under your, if you just go out in the, if it's a regenerating pasture, under your palm, there should be about 16 medic burrs or about eight subclover burrs if you're in subclover country. So you can put your hand down anywhere in the paddock. If there's 16 burrs, then you, then you know you're going to get a reasonable pasture there happening when it rains. Even allowing for the fact that 70% of the plants will die and 80%, up to 80 or 85% of them will be hard seeded, you'll still end up with your 1,000 plants per square metre. That's a thin pasture there of, uh, of 150 plants per square metre. That's your thousand plants per square metre. So look at the difference. You know, that, that pasture there will carry, if you're lucky, two DSEs per hectare in winter. That one there will carry 20 DSEs. And that's the difference in productivity. And it's basically, it doesn't matter how much fertiliser you put on the ground, if you haven't got the density there, then you're not going to get the production. So really the, the key thing with pastures is to, is to sow them early. You can sow them before you get your crops in. Uh, so at a high enough seeding rate, and I'd suggest 10 kilos and perhaps five for balancer. Uh, most important to inoculate with, with rhizobia. We've got a bit slack on that over the last few years. And uh, there's been, and I'll show some photos in a minute of some really good responses we're getting to, uh, to inoculants. So we've, there's been a bit of tendency in the past to say that uh, there's plenty of rhizobia in the ground, the plants will be okay. But unless you actually dig the plants up in winter and have a look at them, you really don't know how well they're nodulating. And even if they are nodulating, we, it's really hard to measure how effective they are. Because the, the newer inoculants are, have been shown to be more effective than the older ones. So they've been doing, there's been a lot of work happening with strains of rhizobia and, and there's new strains, just like there's new varieties of medics and new varieties of subclovers. There are new strains of rhizobia and, and they are coming out. So I think every time you sow a new pasture, even if it's paddocks had a history of, of legume, then it should be inoculated. And obviously, uh, you know, insect and weed control sort of par for the crop. Most of you cropping guys know about that anyway. So that's, that was uh, at Lola's place at uh, uh, Karunda on a trial that was run by Jake Howie and uh, Ross Sardi from, uh, uh, Ross Ballard from Sardi. Um, and uh, you can see there clearly there's a response to, uh, to rhizobia, to inoculation, effective inoculation, in a paddock that had a long history of harbinger medic. So there's plenty of 
naturalised rhizobia there in the paddock, but there was a response to fresh inoculation. And that, that response, that was about a, about a twofold, I think, no more than a yeah, twofold increase in dry matter production, as well as a twofold increase in the number of nodules that have been produced. So if you're putting, you know, you're, using, you're putting legumes in, one of the reasons you're putting legumes in is to produce nitrogen for crops. And to produce nitrogen for crops, you need to have effective nodulation. So it seems to me that, that really that a nodulation is just an essential part of the reason for putting in legumes. And that was in the second, that's a second, a regenerating stand of, uh, of, ha of Herald there. And I haven't got the picture, but the, uh, the, the non-inoculated non Herald from the year before was somewhere else and it was really, really thin. Early sowing is just really essential. Uh, that's a picture, that's an article is actually out of the uh, GRDC ground cover, I think back in December from Western Australia. But in, there's a lot of, we've, all pastures really should be sown dry before you get your cereal program underway, but in Western Australia and New South Wales, they're starting to sow in February. And Cerradella, I've not had much luck with Cerradella at all. Uh, and often Cerradella, what you see on the right is what I see. Um, you put Cerradella in in May and it just grows bugger all feed during winter and you say, oh, this is a pretty shit house plant. You're not gonna ever put that in again because it just doesn't produce anything. <laughs> and balance is a bit the same. And I'll, focus, I'll come back to that in a minute. But, um, but the secret with Cerradella, in this case, has been sowing it in February, dry sowing it in February. And because Cera, the, the newer varieties of Cerradella are hard seeded, they're also encased in pods, which gives them a fair bit of protection against false breaks. So, so where you know you're going to get a trickle of rain early, but then when the break comes, it's a reasonable break, uh, then sowing early takes advantage of whenever that break comes. If it, basically it's the old adage, if a seed's not in the ground, it's not going to germinate. So, so don't wait for a rain to put your pastures in, sow them dry. The other interesting thing was that that Cerradella was, uh, is sown, the one that was sown in uh, February was, was also sown with eight kilograms of Alaska granules. And, and then the uh, rhizobia there had survived quite happily through to when, whenever the break was. Grazing is, I think, the thing that we've probably forgotten a lot how to do is how to manage grazing. And uh, so one of, the, one of the reasons that Balanza has such a bad rap is because it really needs to be deferred graze. If you defer graze Balanza until it's got three or four of the true trifoliate leaves on it, you will actually get some feed in winter. And that's the same with any legume. If you can defer the grazing until it's got three or four true leaves on it, then you will double your winter production. But a lot of, uh, yep? In the first year where you're going for seed set, is there any advantage in grazing it or can you treat it as a crop and go go ungrazed all the way through seed set? No. No, and I, I probably should have, I made a bit of a mistake. When I'm thinking of saying treat things like a crop, I'm really focusing on making sure it's, you've got good weed and insect control but no, it definitely needs to have sheep on it. The, the question was, uh, because I've said that uh, pastures should be treated as a crop, does that mean they, they can get away without being grazed? And the answer is no. That's to maximise seed set. To maximise seed set. You need, you need to graze them. And that's a mistake that people make. And the, the old adage that uh, those that might... Those who have been around for long enough to know people like Ken Holden, you know, the matchbox on the side, stands one of those. Matchbox on the side, stand. That's how, that's how hard you graze to. And that's, you don't let it get higher than that. So we're not talking, we're not talking big, big, you know, talking pastures being grazed within an inch of their life, basically. But if the pasture's dense enough, it'll... It'll take that, no problems at all. The thing, the pastures that won't take it are the ones where you've only got your 150 plants per square metre. They're the ones that will struggle. You've got a dense pasture that's well fertilised, it'll take hard grazing. 
So again, it comes back to this seed to the seed numbers. The beauty about pastures is the harder you graze them, the more flowers you get. The more flowers you get, the more seeds you get. And that's the thing I think we've, that art has been lost. But if you talk to any of the any of the old seed growers around the place, they they are all really well, really good at managing grazing. Yeah. So that's keeping pastures short in spring. Now obviously. And, and we're not talking about crash grazing, like people do make a bit of a mistake of letting their pastures get up to a foot high and then they crash in with a big mob of sheep. You just leave the sheep in there the whole time and, and just let them keep them really short. Um, 20 DSEs is a, is a good, certainly would be what you should be running at in spring. And I know you can't run every paddock on your farm at 20 DSEs. But really what you can do though is focus on any new pastures because again, as I said at the start, you'd want to, you want to turn this 50 kilos of seed, uh, 10 kilos of seed into 500 kilos. So the, first, the best, the most important pastures you focus on are the ones you've just sown. And are the ones that you need, you can concentrate your sheep in those, but keep the pressure consistently high just and uh, and keep them short. And I've got some photos. Um, so that's uh, yeah, uh, Tyson Micken there at uh, Cummins. So yeah, that's that's a really well managed stand of Balanza clover. So the secret, what he did was there, that paddock was uh, was deferred grazed in autumn until the plants got three or four true leaves on them, and then he just piled the sheep in there, and he kept a high stocking rate right through to when that is actually dried off. That pasture, I don't think, ever got higher than probably three or four centimetres. And that's that, and that, and then once you've got, and that Valance is capable of producing 1,500 kilos of seed. You'd imagine something like, with Valance, with 1,500 kilos of seeds as small as Valance, are you looking at a hell of a lot of, a hell of a lot of seeds per hectare. And that was a paddock at Straff. Someone asked me in the other group, does this work in the season we just had? Well, this is a paddock at Strath that uh, last year that was grazed too down, never got higher than about three or four centimetres high, and that set a lot of seed, even in the season we've had. Pastures are extremely adaptable to climatic changes. Uh, they flower over a long period. Um, the more pressure you keep on them in spring, the longer they tend to keep flowering. What they really, especially flowers, what flowers really don't like is being shaded. So if you can keep those pastures short, uh, they'll produce a lot of seed. Um, so I've kept emphasising that you know, seed production is king and it's, it's ace and it's jack and it's queen as well. You know, there's a, pa a paddock there at Minipa at the research centre that had successfully regenerated after 22 years of crop. It just shows how much, how, how many seed reserves some of these paddocks have got have been well managed in the past. Sulla, I'll just sort of mention Sulla. Um, I think, Bill, you might know a couple of paddocks of Sulla around the place. Sulla's had a bit of a bad rap. Um, and, uh, but I think the people that have learned how to manage it get like, uh, is it Trevor, Trevor Polkinghorn? Get on pretty well with it. This was a paddock at Millicent, again, that's been managed. Again, there's... You've got a mixture in these paddocks, you've got a mixture of the big old plants, that are the biennial plants that have got the huge big tap roots, and then you've got a lot of little plants amongst them. So if you can let those plants, give those plants a chance to actually get established, and then make sure they produce some seed in spring, and then again make sure they get established in autumn, you'll get some feed off it. Now Sulla, isn't it, a plant like Sulla does help if you get an early break. Um, and I think that's a secret with all these, all these new legumes, you've really got to learn how to manage them. And a lot of people put in far too big an area to start with. You're going to put in 100 hectares or something, there's no way you can manage it effectively. So just try you know, 10 or 15 hectares until you get to know how to manage. Because all the pastures are a bit different. So Sulla does respond, you really do need to have an early break um, to get that to go. But if you get an early break, then you'll get a lot of feed off it. Um, the other sort of interesting thing is that, uh, that some of the, uh, the Cerradellas and the Bicerulas um, and some of the small seed like Balanza, they actually, they'll regenerate better if they pass through an animal's gut. Whereas your medics and your clovers, if they pass through an animal's gut, the animal just 
turns them into protein and energy and they get digested and that's the end of them. So how you graze your pastures over summer will depend on the seed size and whether that seed is actually encased in a pot or not. So in, in Western Australia, uh, they're getting on pretty well with Cerradella. Uh, they can direct head Cerradella with an open front header. Um, um, they, they spread it out, they reach, sow it in February and it's producing a lot of feed then uh, when it rains. And then, and then with, the, with the stubbles, the residues, they're grazing that over summer. Uh, they graze it quite hard and they just turn it back through the sheep and all the, the um, pods get put out through the back end of a sheep and then they get spread around the paddock and that helps their germination when it rains because the passing through the digestive system has broken down the, uh, uh, the hard seededness to some extent. So that's the key, I think, if you're going to plant something new, get to know a bit about it before you go into it in a big way. But but at the same time, there's been a lot of new varieties put out that have been discounted or been discontinued or people have not grown them because they've never had any luck with them. And the reason they've never had any luck with them is just because they haven't been managed properly in that first year. So that's probably it in a nutshell, but uh, just I think the, probably the best pastures still are the ones that are grown locally in your district, the ones that have been there for a long time. We've got a lot of new varieties out that are improvements, you know, whether it's a sulfon or urea tolerance or a mildew tolerance. Um, the, the breeders, the Jake Howies and the other people that are working in the breeding side of things are focusing on making sure they've got enough hard seeds. The hard seeds are so, such that they break down at the start of the season. Um, they're focusing on seed production. Um, and, uh, and also, I'd suggest you just check how well your pastures are nodulating. Have, dig up a few plants in winter and uh, just see how many nodules they've got. Maybe just try, you can, you, can, you can grab some samples of soil, put it in some pots, you can do that now. Uh, put some seed in the pots that's been treated with, with alcohol just to make sure there's no residual rhizobia on the seed. Put those seed into a pot and just see how well, how many nodules they've got. That'll give you an idea of how effective your uh, soil is f with nodule production. And, uh, but also you can have a little comparison with some seed that's been treated in alcohol and then just had some peat inoculant put in with it and just compare. So I think, not, if you're gonna be, as I said, if you're gonna be putting in uh, legumes for, for nitrogen production, if they're not nodulating effectively, then they're not really achieving their, their own.